Look at Brandon Ingram denying this putback attempt from Victor Wimbanyama as Zion Williamson races down court to finish an incredible go-ahead basket over two Spurs defenders and a trailing future DPOY. This was a special sequence from last season which involved the Pelicans' two best players, Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram. But while many Pelicans fans like myself were looking forward to seeing more dynamic sequences just like this one from this duo this upcoming season, with the Pelicans looking to build on their best regular season since 08, let's just say that things have taken a bit of a messy turn in New Orleans. But before we continue, guys, we are closing in on 300,000 subscribers. If you are new to the channel or have been getting recommended my content and enjoy it, be sure to subscribe, it helps out a ton and it makes it easier to find my content. Now with that out of the way, we have to get a word from today's sponsor. Guys, after stomping the Cowboys, my New Orleans Saints are 2-0. And we've got some football coming on tonight, so you guys know that I had to submit some lineups on Underdog to celebrate this occasion. So Saquon has been looking good in that Eagles offense behind the bulky O-line, so I think that the Eagles run him over 17 and a half times tonight. Drake London didn't do anything week one, but neither did Kirk Cousins. I think that he's too good to stay down for multiple games and that he bounces back. Drake, you can give me four and a half receptions. Now to maximize your time on underdog, use my code COOP, because with code COOP, it's getting hooked up. You can now get up to $1,000 in bonus cash, along with a free pick. It's also a great way to support the channel. Thank you underdog for the sponsor. When Zion Williamson entered the NBA, he wouldn't enter it without monumental expectations. Zion would be widely regarded as the best prospect to enter the NBA since LeBron James. For those of you who for whatever reason forgot, the LeBron hype was different. For people to put Zion in the same class as one of the greatest to ever do it entering the NBA, that says a lot about the talent that Zion possessed. It was just all on Zion to maximize that talent. Coming into the NBA, Zion was seen as somebody that could fill up a gym and then shut it down that same night. Zion would get this monumental praise, but that same praise would only make things so much more disappointing when he would be failing to leave his mark and maximize his true potential. With all eyes on Zion in the in-season tournament this past season, that failure would feel closer to ever to becoming a reality that was set in stone. Against the Lakers in the NBA Cup, his numbers were bad. He finished with just 13 points, 2 rebounds, and 3 assists in 26 minutes. During those 26 minutes that Zion played, the Pelicans would get outscored by 33 points. While his numbers were bad, how he looked was so much worse. At this moment in time, a lethargic and out of shape Zion looked nothing like the man who was made the undisputed number one overall pick over the high-flying John ja Morant in the 2019 NBA Draft. And when a player of Zion's caliber looks that bad, people are going to talk about it. Just the same thing we said the other night, so it's nothing new. This guy, the thing that disturbs me is he's not a young kid. When Moses told me I was fat and lazy, I was a rookie. He's been in the league long enough. He's got two guys in his team that are better players than him, and they shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. He should all. be. He was the number one pick in the draft. He should be a better player than Ingram. We like Ingram, obviously. We love CJ. He should be the best player, and he's not even close. Number one, he's got to get in shape. I've told you, I've been very disappointed. He's averaging six rebounds a game. He's only had two double-doubles all season. When Charles Barkley, who has faced a ton of criticism about his own size, is disappointed with you and says that you're out of shape and not playing up to your ability, then you know that you aren't doing everything that you can to maximize yourself. However, what happened during the in-season tournament would be far from a foresight of things to come with Zion, because to close the season for the New Orleans Pelicans, we would finally get to see what an unleashed and locked in Zion Williamson looks like. And let me tell you that it looked devastating. The Lakers witnessed this man's dominance firsthand in the playing tournament as he went on to score 40 points, grab 11 rebounds, and hand out 5 assists, all while locking down LeBron James before he sadly had to leave this game due to injury. Seeing Zion dominate in a fashion that we hadn't really seen since Duke 
nearly brought tears to my eyes. For Pelicans fans, seeing Zion play at this level in the biggest game of his NBA career, that was huge for the future outlook of our franchise. But while Zion's performance was great, this game would push another question about this franchise to the forefront. And that question was, what was this franchise going to do with its star player who was benched at the 738 mark of that playing game and never returned? Zion Williamson went down late in this game, and still Brandon Ingram would not re-enter the game. When you make a decision like this as a coach, that's one that you have to stand on and it's one that Willie Green absolutely did. There were already doubts about this duo's fit together and what was going to be Ingram's future with only a year remaining on his contract. Well, that game against the Lakers, followed by his abysmal series against OKC in the first round of the playoffs, would do all but seal his fate, with this team having 3 and D lockdown wing Herb Jones locked up on a team-friendly deal, and the athletic and sharpshooting Trey Murphy just begging for a bigger role and a bigger contract. With the Pelicans having two high-level, low-volume wings who fit next to Zion Williamson ready to go, and having to deal with a CBA that is sensitive to huge contracts, you could understand why him and the Pelicans have yet to come to terms on an extension when this man is seeking one in the range of four years, $208 million. Earlier this offseason, Mark Stein would report that the Pelicans have made it clear that they won't go that far to re-sign him, and that despite various other teams exploring Ingram trade since the offseason began, and even Ingram's camp themselves trying to find a team to pay him what he wants, so far no team has has been willing to meet his asking price. This leaves Brandon Ingram currently in a very funny situation. He's still on a very talented roster, one that added DeJounte Murray this offseason. But at the same time, he still doesn't have a contract to be on this team beyond next season and as much as it breaks my heart to say, the situation in New Orleans is only getting uglier. August 30th on IG, he would repost this video to his story. In this video, this man says that if you stay in environments where people don't know the true value of you, you will shrink your gift to the size of what they can stand. And then, around the same time that this would get reposted, Brandon Ingram would just happen to skip a voluntary minicamp that every single Pelican but him and Daniel Tice attended. The kicker here is that not only is he usually the one who organizes these kinds of things, but the Pelicans actually believed that Ingram would be in attendance. This whole situation sucks all around, because Ingram was a leader for this franchise when this franchise didn't have one. This could all be posturing from Ingram who has clearly wanted to stay in New Orleans and finish what he built, or he could seriously be over the situation here and feel disrespected by the franchise. As much as I love Brandon Ingram and would hate to trade somebody who averaged 20.8 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 5.7 assists last season, shooting 49.2% from the field, I do understand that a trade might be what both sides need before the season begins if he remains determined to get that $208 million that he's seeking. The last thing that the Pelicans need is this whole mess spilling into the season affecting morale and Ingram potentially lowering his trade value even more with there being less ball to go around. I really do believe that if you are going to trade Brandon Ingram that there are some great benefits to trading him as soon as possible. The sooner you trade him, the sooner you can see what you really have in Trey Murphy whose game has been rapidly expanding beyond just being an athletic set shooter. Like I said guys, it's a tough situation to be in, but again, Again, the sooner that you trade this guy and figure this whole thing out, the better. The last thing that I want is a potential crazy season for the Pelicans being derailed before it even starts. Sure, the Pelicans could use more depth at big, but even so, the roster is the most talented that it's ever been with Zion. And Zion is also in the best shape of his life, which infinitely raises the Pelican ceiling. It's no coincidence that Chris Connor of Boot Crew Media talked to some people in Zion's camp, and they're 
saying, not only is he having the best physical offseason that he's had so far, but he's also having the best mental offseason that he's had so far, which you just love to hear for Zion, who has faced intense ridicule in the NBA. Just look at some of these pictures and videos from this offseason. If Zion continues this form and stays locked in, I don't think it's an overstatement to say that this man has the potential to wreck the league this year. I'm talking about he finishes the season as a top 5, maybe top 3 player if he stays healthy. That's how confident I am in what he's going to do this season. Guys, if you were the Pelicans, what would you do with Brandon Ingram? Would you trade him to a team and if you would, let me know what team trading for Brandon Ingram makes the most sense to you. Could you see him being traded to a team like the Heat, the Warriors, or the Cavaliers? Or do you think that the resolution will be him either playing out his contract or re-signing with the Pelicans for whatever amount that both parties agree on? I'm going to say this, the Cavs and Pels deal centered around Jared Allen and Brandon Ingram could benefit both teams. The Cavs could use a high impact wing and the Pelicans could use an efficient veteran defensive big that knows their role. Anyways guys, there's some more going on in the basketball world that I need to be covering. Using code COOP for underdog and clicking the video on the screen right now are great ways to support this channel. I'm Get Like Coop, bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.